Hi, I'm Cassidy, and welcome to Show My Stash. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show all you Hodgers my stash. Oh, by the way, have you noticed my friend here? This, this is Allison. Allison is a nice, soft, cuddly ball of stuff. I named her Allison because even though she is a nice, cuddly ball of stuff, there's probably a murderous, alcoholic psychopath lurking somewhere inside. That's a joke Mary will get. This is my only yarn, and I picked it up yesterday because, as you know, I am the bad hooker and I don't crochet. But now I can say, hey, I have yarn. I may not keep it forever. I may give it away to someone, but I do have yarn. So I'm up there with you now. However, this isn't my real stash. See, I have other hobbies, other endeavors that I work with and over the years I've accumulated a stash in those areas and allow me to show you what those things are but to do that I have to put you on my computer or at least I have to show you my computer because that's where my stash reigns so Allison you just rest right there yes you will don't go anywhere I'm going to move the camera and when I do that I'm going to actually close the lens cap so people aren't getting seasick and you know throwing up and stuff like that I wouldn't want that to happen so just give me a second I'm going to reposition oh everything is dark because even though everything is dark Even though everything is dark, it is still moving about. There is my computer. And over here is everything that is sitting on this drive over here. That white one right there, yes. That's one of my external drives. And that's where I keep my stash. Let me zoom in a little bit. You see, there's two things that I do. I'm a novelist, for one, so I have a collection of stories that I have written over the years. And here they are, stories finished, stories that I'm editing, and stories in progress. And then you'll notice there's a lot of stuff in progress. <laughs> That's not unusual. Let's take a look at the stories in progress. This right here, I'll move up so you can actually see it. There you go. This right here, the Foundation Chronicles, that's the big story that I'm working on that I have been working on for 10 months now. Let me zoom you in just a little bit. There we go, that's better. And move you up, and there you are. That's the one I've been working on for 10 months. That's the one that's a quarter of a million words so far. This one right here, The Relocator, was the first story I wrote when I moved out here to Harrisburg. And it's actually the only short story I've ever written. It's under 7,000 words. It's about 6,000 words total, which does make it, does make it a, um, a short story. 
here, Suggestive Amusements, that is actually my Muse story, and it's the first one where I included crocheting. Uh, this was a short, this was a novel that I wrote, as well as this one, for a blog site, and I've yet to publish them. Uh, Fantasies and Harmony is a novel that I wrote for laughs kind of last year. It is an erotic fantasy. Everyone who's beta read it has told me that they like it and that also it has made them horny, which I take both of those as compliments. Uh, Diners at Memory End and Transporting those are unusual. Transporting was actually the first novel I started to work on and it took me 20 years to complete. Diners at Memory's End was actually a story I wrote while I was working for a chemical firm in Chicago and in 1990 I wrote the original version of this and it was the first really long story. It's almost it at that time it was almost novel length. This version of it actually is novel length and it was the first one I ever completed. So, And then this story here, Colorijo, that is actually a follow-up to my first published story, Kuntilanik. And I'm hoping later this year, after I'm finished with Act 2 of my Foundation Chronicle story, to edit it and get a cover for it and actually publish it. It'll be the first thing I've published in about a year and a half and I need to do that. These are stories that are currently in editing and I've yet to get them out of editing. You'll see Replacements is there, another story called Echoes is there, and Couples Dance which is a novel length erotic horror story that I wrote um, two years back. And that's another one that I hope to actually get out this year. And then my stories that are finished, oops, wrong one. Captivate and Control, which is my erotica that I sold. Her Demonic Majesty, which was a self-published novel. And Kunti Lanik, which is a 25,000 word novella, which was my first self-published story all available for sale on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or Smashwords. But that's not the only stash I have. Up here. Up here. Yes, right there. Documents. What are those documents? These are games. At one time, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see better. At one time, I did a lot of tabletop role-playing. You know, most of you would think of tabletop role-playing as Dungeons and Dragons. But it really goes beyond that. There's uh, a lot of stuff. Like here, Alien, Atlantis, Atomic Highway, B5 is Babylon 5. Battletech, Battlestar Galactica, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Call of Cthulhu, and then Shadowrun, Serenity. Serenity, for you fans of television science fiction, is exactly what you think it is. It's the movie version of Firefly, which I also have as a game down here. See, Firefly, right under Farscape, and right before Forgotten Futures. Most of these are standalone games. They're all in PDF form. Here's all the stuff I have for my Dresden Files game, which is based off of the Dresden Files uh, RP, uh, novels. And you'll see there's a lot of stuff I have out there. I don't just have um, the core books, but I also have a lot of other things that go along with it. Um, oh. Here's one that might interest you. Some of you people, Doctor Who. And this is most of my core stuff that I have collected for Doctor Who. You will notice if I bring up over here, the Time Traveler's Companions. 
Come on, focus. Probably won't. It's too blurry, too close. It's trying to focus, but it won't. Uh, that's actually the 11th Doctor with River Song. And that's all the stuff I have for Doctor Who. There's a lot more of it, but it, it costs money. <laughs> all of this stuff costs money. Here's all my stuff for Call of Cthulhu. A lot of it. Probably the biggest collection. I also have Eclipse Phase, which I love a lot. But probably the biggest stuff I have is for something called the World of Darkness. Right down here. World of Darkness. And the reason there's so much of it here is because this is all broken out into different games. Changeling, Geist, Hunter, Mage. I played a lot of Mage. Orpheus, Prometheus, Scion, Trinity, and of course the famous Vampire and Werewolf. I've played a lot of these games. I used to play for almost 30 years. And I GM'd or game mastered probably for a good 20 years, 25 years. I actually used to go to conventions and run games. I don't anymore because, well, just got older, people moved away, other interests changed, and I'm no longer living where I used to game all the time. Most of the people I know who game these days uh, do a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that, and I don't particularly care for Dungeons and Dragons. If you may have noticed, I don't have any D and D on my list of games. There's no D and D. I don't play. I've played two games of D and D. I'm not a D and D player. So I'm gonna move you back. Hold on. And there's my computer. My famous computer. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna move you back. That's my stash. That's me. Those are my hobbies. Those are my passions. Writing started out as a hobby, became a passion. Gaming started out as a hobby, it became a passion as well. Don't ever let anyone tell you that your passions are worthless. Your passions are what define you. And people who aren't creative, who aren't imaginative, they have a difficult time understanding this. We, we know. We know different. Don't ever let them beat you down. Don't ever let them tell you you're wasting your time. Don't ever let them tell you, oh, another hobby just what you need. It's their loss, not yours. So, Allison and I say thank you for coming in and we hope you enjoyed our little show here. You Hodgers take care and I'll see you on my next video recording. Bye! Say bye, Allison.